Hey, I'm Matt Hutchins, and he's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great, Matt. How about you? I'm doing good, buddy. I thought we would talk today about eight reasons you need a cash flow statement. Eight reasons every business owner needs a cash flow statement. So uh, I'll ask you randomly, because I think I know the answer to, uh, do you have a cash flow statement? Do you look at cash flow statement? Do you well, have one made up? Do you make up one? Yeah, well, I actually use one. I I print one out of my accounting software. Yes. Oh, good. All right. To keep track of my cash flow. Ninety-five percent of business owners do not. Yeah. It, well, actually, if they have any kind of accounting software, it's in there. It's in there. They just don't they look just at don't it. Use it. Uh, they just don't use it. That is because exactly. it, then let's let's be realistic. Why they don't use it? It's often why they don't have systems. It's what they think they got it here. They look yep. at the checking account and they're like, okay, yes. I, they look at the accounts receivable and accounts payable and they're like, okay, we're good. Yes. So let's go into eight reasons why, because I'm Matt, I'm as guilty as anyone. I probably look at cash flow. I rarely look at my cash flow statement. Um, although, I mean, I got P&Ls right here. I've been yes. I'm yes. always looking at the, P &L, the cash flow is a little different, right? So what is a cash flow statement? And, and, and so it's going to sound like accounting, but it's just, it's just, where's the money going? That's all a cash flow statement is where are money going? And the profit and loss says, am I making money? But then there's a different thing of being, do I have that money in the bank account or is it somewhere else? Because the, th the, the three places the cash comes from and goes to, right? So it comes from operating activity. So when you have your P&L and you made a profit, that would be, hey, I, I bought something. I uh, bought some inventory. I sold it. I made a profit. That generates cash. That's called your operating cash flow, right? But then there are two other kinds of, of cash flow. One is called your investing activities. Did you buy plant or equipment, right? Did you buy a new vending machine? Did you buy a new press? Did you buy a new software? Did you buy a new hardware? That's something that you took the cash from your P&L statement, but you bought some equipment, some hardware, um, an asset, a piece of real estate, you know, an office building, warehouse space, that ate up your cash, right? Yeah. And then the opposite of that would be financing, right? So let's say you bought some equipment. Did you pay cash, which means it came out of your bank account, or did you borrow money from, from the bank, right? Or you raised money from one of the investors, you know, you got a note, or you raised more equity. Hey, we all had a capital call, we put more money in there. So that's called your financing activity. So the cash flow statement is three things. It's how much money do we cash do we generate from the operating, you know, buying the good, you know, selling the good and making a profit. But then the other two is what we use that cash for. A lot of times you buy equipment and you and I always say that your business will use as much cash as you'll let it. And this is where I think what happens to people, right? Is they go and they buy a new piece of equipment, a new piece of software, whatever, a new toy. Even inventory. You get, you get a inventory. lot of inventory on the shelf. It can show a, like you have a big profit on your, on your bottom line, but it's not in your checking account. It's on the shelf. It's on the shelf. And that's a great. So go into the eight reasons. So, so really, it's the reason you want the cash flow statement. And like you said, it's in your QuickBooks or your uh, accountant or your bookkeeper can do it, right? Yep. Uh, it's basically insights into your spending activities, right? You're going to say, well, look, it looks like I made $100,000 over here. But yeah, but I had to buy 50000 worth of inventory for next quarter, right? Yep. Or I had to buy a $50,000 piece of equipment or machinery, right? Yeah. And, and that would be a reason that... that, that which goes into short-term planning. How much cash am I going to need? Because next quarter, do I need to buy 50,000 worth of inventory or 75,000 or 25,000 worth of inventory? So you need to know where your cash is going because they always, this is the saying, this is where it comes up with cash is king. Businesses don't go out of money for lack of profit. They go out of business for lack of cash flow, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the cash that's king. Um, I'll use the example you and I just talked offline and uh, talked about a, a real estate management company. <clears throat> so they took bank owned property, the bank forecloses on a house. These guys would come in and, you know, fix it up, do some repair work, change out the locks, get the, 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 the grass cut, you know? Well, that costs money, let's get the grass cut, let's change the locks, let's repair the windows, let's get a new paint job and all that stuff. That's what the banks wanted them to do in order to sell it, then they would sell it, right? But the banks paid, took a long time to pay them back anywhere from 30, 60 to 90 days, really more like 60 to 90 days. So what was interesting was their business was growing. You know, first, they were doing 10 houses uh, a month. 
So 10 houses a month, I need, you know, I don't know, a thousand dollars per house. I'm just making this up. And, and that's to change the locks, to do some, you know, repair and maintenance and to do the, that's $10,000. You got 10 houses, I need a thousand a month. Well, that's 10,000 a month, but by the way, they're not going to pay you for three months. So you really need $30,000 just for that first batch of houses, that 10. Well, next month, what if you got 10 more houses or, or 20? So, so now this month, it's, let's just use 10, 000, 10 new houses. So you got 10 from last month. Now, you get, now it's 20. Well, now, now you need $20,000, not 10, because you have yeah. last month plus this month. And then you need 20,000 for the next two months. Well, then the, the third month, we got another 10 houses. We still got the original 10, which we haven't been paid for. Now I need 30,000 of cash flow for the next three months. So literally they were, they were like, I, where, where's the cash going? Where, where's the, and that's what they call working capital. In order for them to run the business, they needed $30,000, not $10,000, because they had to fix up 30 homes and repair and maintain 30 homes, not 10. Well, let's just keep going. Before they knew it, it was 50 houses, 100 houses. So in, in a very short period of time, they almost went out of business because they didn't realize they needed cash flow, working capital. What they needed was a line of credit or, an, or, or a note. They needed cash. Great business model. We, we take these houses in, we're going to flip them. And they made houses, they made about three to 5,000 per house by the time it's all done. Yeah. But it's that carrying cost where they needed the cash for the and this is where days. this is where bankers kind of are okay. So the bankers were yes. bringing them out, but yes. the bankers would be right there to say, Hey, we won't give Make you an equity payment. or we won't give you a, a credit line because you haven't been in business long enough. Let's just say that was a scenario that that can happen, but we'll let you factor the invoices where we'll basically we will bend you over and take you know, <laughs> like 10% of your, your money that you have coming in so you can have it now. So you're going to lose. I mean, that's what factoring is. Yeah, I mean, that's what factoring is. Accounts receivables financing. That's exactly what it is. And that's so that this is why you need to know about your cash flow because you don't want to be begging somebody for money to on what's on your accounts on your receivable. Business. Yes, exactly right. So, yeah. so, I mean, these are all related. Short-term planning for your cash flow needs. Better for your uh, cash planning picture. So I know where the cash is. Uh, ability to increase my cash flow. If I don't know what it is, how would I know how to increase it, right? What you really want is a profitable cash flowing business. That's what we all want, right? I don't want that business that I just described uh, per se because it's eating up my cash flow. Every time I grow, I got to leave more. It's like having an inventory, just like we just said when we started this conversation. If I'm a nuts and bolts guy and I'm only doing 100,000 in sales, I need, and I got... 25% profit margins, I need $7,500, $7,500 of inventory. Well, hell, if I'm doing a million dollars, now I need 750,000 of inventory. Well, that's yeah. that's my cash. I got to leave in the business, right? That's, that's the same exact scenario, just a different, that's a manufacturing or a supply distrib distributor versus a real estate repair flip model. But you understand there's more need for cash. I need $750,000 of cash, not $7,500 in cash because I'm selling a million dollars worth of product now and I got to have inventory to turn over. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's cash flow. That's working capital. How much cash do I have on hand? So you got to have, you got to increase your knowledge of where the cash is going. Literally. I had a client years ago that came to me, same kind of number, you know, whatever I'm doing really well. I feel like I'm really well. I got a six figure business. It looks like I'm making a rig, a big profit, but at the end of the day, I don't have any money. I'm, I'm, I'm barely getting by and, 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 and the bank account isn't growing. Right. And so just like you and I always say, your business will eat as much cash flow as you'll let it. Right. So we take, try to take a look at his numbers. What is he doing? Everything we just talked about, right. He's buying new equipment, not deciding if it's a return on investment or should I have borrowed money from the bank to do that? Meaning if you're going to borrow money, you're going to dang, make sure that you can make a profit on it to pay the loan back. Right. But yeah. when it's his own money, not just him, most business owners are like, oh, it's, I got 100,000 in cash. Why wouldn't I buy that equipment? Well, because I want to make sure that it's going to produce a profit of the 100 grand. If you borrowed the 100 grand, you darn make sure that you could make enough money to pay the loan off, wouldn't you? You know, it's funny. And this, Matt, happens to a lot of business owners. They get in a position where they're cash flowing really good. They don't have a cash flow you know, statement. They just, they're cash flowing really good, really strong. And so as they're growing their business, they're like, 
ah, you know, I can go buy that new toy, whatever it is, yes. car, boat, yes. uh, RV, whatever. And they and so they do that. And then all of a sudden they think their business slowed down. But reality is before they had the cash on hand and it, it they never really recognized that the cash on hand was was going to float the business for those times. So this is also, the, if that's not on your list, it's, it's so you know when you can buy something, another toy for yourself is why you need to know your cash flow because if you buy it at the wrong time, you could put yourself in a bad position. In a bad position. I'll give you another great example, right? So I was working with a service business and I'll give you, I'll come back to this was not this business, but here's where their model was, was they provide a service and then they bill their clients, but they owe their contract they're the laborers. They, they owe their employees, but there's a contract employees. So they get hired. We're going to do a service. I'm going to hire some contractors to do that for you. And then I'm going to uh, bill you. And then I'm going to pay the contractors. What they were doing was paying the contractors before they got the cash from the client, the customer. Right. So run that. Now. I'm billing a hundred thousand a month. That's a $1.2 million a year business. I'm yep. billing a hundred thousand a month. But I'm paying out, I think their margins were, were uh, 40%. I'm paying out 60,000 to the contractors and I'm keeping 40, but they paid out the 60 before the 100 came in. So they had to have 60 grand to pay. Oh, this will be here next week. Well, you had to borrow money to do that from their line of credit. What if these guys are taking 30, 60, 90 days? What happens next month? Another $100,000 billing cycle, another 60,000 you paid off, right? Yeah, you still hadn't got your hundred thousand from two months ago. Maybe you got twenty five of it or forty of it. Right? This is precisely what it's like dealing with the Chinese when you're buying products from China. Here's why: because okay, so you 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 buy you have a manufacturer in China and they never give terms. I mean, okay. unless you're a twenty million dollar a month customer, they're not giving you terms. So you're going to buy from them. No bank is going to sponsor that because they don't trust the don't trust them. I'll just say it that way. So you pay for the product. It's now on a boat. Okay, right. so you paid you paid a down payment, and by the time they're written ready to put it in, in the back of a, a, a container and put it on a boat, you've now paid 100%. That boat's got to float all the way across the ocean, and now you're out the money, and then yes. you're going you're gonna to get it to your warehouse, and then you're going to have it installed at your customer or what have you, and that whole, that whole period of time can be six months. You're floating money sometimes dealing with China for six months. I mean, I've done it in the LED business. You know, yeah. since oh nine, and um, it's brutally long. And so, if you don't manage your cash flow, there are there are things that, I mean, some would say, well, don't buy from China then. Well, I, I get that, but there are reasons you buy from China because the margins are higher. Um, right, right. And, but that's a, that's a great example. Go back and well, it looks like you're making a ton of money, but unless you got six months of money to live on, then you wouldn't be doing great. Because if you had to feed the kids over, let's just use one example, right? Four employees or, you know, or what have yeah. you, that, that's a lot. You got to pay them for six months. And that, so you'd have to buy the inventory plus pay everybody for six months before you'd even have, even sell a product, right? How much cash do you need to pay employees for six months before you even, and the inventory and you haven't even made a dollar. But it you looks know, like you made a dollar because we're you going through all this and it sounds like really bad to be self-employed, but it's not. <laughs> this is what we're trying to help you do is we're trying to help you look at this stuff so that you don't get into trouble um, in business. I mean, right. how at, much working capital do you need? How much cash do you need on hand? How much line of credit do you need? Right. You want to get that in advance. Right. Because just like you were saying earlier, what if I need 50,000 tomorrow and somebody's going to really uh, screw me for a short term loan because I didn't realize I needed 50,000 to pay for that inventory because I had some other stuff from a month or two ago, right? That's when they take advantage of you, of, of, of giving you unfavorable, oh yeah, you need the last $50,000. What are you going to do? Not get the $50,000? You're, you're going to go out of business if you don't get the last 50000 And Matt, there are people like Cabbage and some of these other uh, loaners out there, some of them loan at like 50% interest. It's like, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, it's like, are you serious? I mean, you talk about um, the vulnerability of like when people are at their worst in business is when those companies will come in and they will basically, and this is why we're doing this because you can't let somebody take advantage of you at your worst time. 
That's right. Take over the business. They'll take it right from you. Yeah. And it's, and that's the truth. And it's so, so you, you got to build it. You got to know where you're at from a cash flow standpoint so that, so that you can operate your business from a legitimate, you know, if you know where you are, cash flow standpoint, then, and you go to a bank, you say, okay, here's, here's what, here's my business model and I'm profitable. And you can show them you're profitable, but you have these gaps, these three or, or four month gaps. That's what a credit line is for. That's um, what exactly what they're for. And that goes back to like, so another one of the other ones, crisis management, right? So we, you know, we just went through the pandemic and the crisis management. I hope everybody's looking at their, their cash flow saying how much cash do I need and what's my burn rate? You know, am I spending 10,000 a month, 20,000, 50,000 a month? How much cash do I have on hand? How long can I pay these people? Which is why they came out with a PPP loan, right? To help keep people employed and pay them and, and, and pay your rent or whatever, right? But that's crisis management. How much cash do I need to keep the business going when I got zero sales or I yeah. got a fraction of my sales? At least in the beginning when we didn't know what was going to happen. Hopefully everybody was doing crisis management. But if you had your cash flow statement and you knew what was going on, it would have been an easier question to answer. I'm sure a lot of, well, 96% of people were in crisis management mode. Oh my God, how much cash do I have on hand? How much do I need? I need to figure this numbers out. Where if you'd been doing this all along, you would kind of, I got six months, I got nine months, I got 12 months, plus access to a line of credit that could carry us, right? So crisis management is another reason you need to know your cash flow numbers and, and what your business eats up. But like we said, I like going back to this, eats up just came to my mind, like we talked about, your business will eat as much cash flow as you will let it, right? So, so don't let it eat the cash flow, just manage it. You and I talked about profit first several times and- I was just thinking about that. I've got my bookshelf over here and I was thinking, yeah, okay. thinking of Mike McCallow, it's, it's up there somewhere, but that's the point is, you know, that's the point he says, start putting, but that's not the point of, of profit first profit first was to take money off the top and put it aside for yourself so that you can invest in other things or do the things you want to do with the money. Um, but at the same time, the concept of profit first is to know your you know where you stand at all times, know your numbers. We did a show a year ago, probably about knowing your numbers. And this falls under knowing your numbers because knowing your numbers. you're trying to build four pillars of wealth. And with your business being one, I don't want to say the only, the, the first pillar, because it's not, because you could have a job. And so the business can be a fourth pillar, but it could be the last, you could work for a company, but you build out your other three pillars and come back to having a business later in life. It doesn't have to be in a specific order, but if you have a business and you want to build out the other three pillars, you better know these numbers because cash flow will, it will eat, it'll eat, like you said, a business will eat every dollar you have. No problem. Right. Because the more you have, the more you think you can afford and the more you'll, the less you'll watch. The yeah, less the less watch. Going, the How less. did I get a half a million dollars stolen from me? I wasn't paying attention. That's I a mean, great point. Yes. Because you're you like, know, hey, the free cash flow is falling. Exactly. If I was watching, I would have seen over 35 months, $17,000 on average going out. The Where's that money going? I would have noticed. But that's what happens so when you say 60% of all small businesses are victim of embezzlement. 60%. My father-in-law was a victim twice. It's higher, it's higher than that because your employees will, some employees will take pens and see, it's, see, they don't like, they take a pen home. Okay. It sounds like nothing. That's not embezzlement, right? Cause embezzlement has a higher number attached to it. But <laughs> um, how many employees take home reams of paper or, that's Bar right. Bar my, my golf club, they lose golf balls every year, right? So they buy new, brand new golf balls at the range ball. And by the end of the season, they magically, you know, 50% of them are gone, you know. because What do you guys like, use, Titleist? Yeah, we use Titleist, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, when I was a member. Them, yeah, the kids will take them and go play golf, and the kids will take them to their house. Hell, maybe adults take them. I don't know who takes them. But somebody's taking them by the end of the year. We're down to 50% of the number of balls we had. It's what year. happens. TPC Sawgrass. Um, when I was a member there, that's where they have, um, you know, it's all Titleist. And so yeah. they hand you this nice bag of range balls and it's in the cart when you get it, cause it's included in the experience. And well, if you don't go to the range, 
now they, they didn't always do this, but they did it. They didn't do it back when I first was a member. Now they'll, they'll come up the second you don't go to the range, they'll take those range balls. Cause <laughs> you know, those balls are probably a buck a piece. So, you know, in bulk, like they're buying them, I'm sure yeah. they're mistake balls that title has had, but sure the point is still. even it's they great. have to watch their cash flow because if not, they're in this case, their customers will, will eat their cash flow. So they have to watch. And that's what this, this episode is about is, is knowing your cash flow is, you know, it's everything. It's why you need a cash flow statement. Now, um, what, what's a cash flow statement? Like, let's say some people don't run, um, you know, they don't run accounting software. Let's say you have an Amazon business. Well, you know, Amazon basically, they sell everything. It's online. And, and at the end of the month or twice a month, they send you a wire for or an ACH for your money. Well, those a lot of those companies don't run a, a, like a legitimate accounting statement. So what's a cash flow statement? Because yeah, all, cash flow would just be what? Uh, uh, revenue in, expenses out. You're still right? paying for the merchandise to, to send to mm -hmm. Amazon fulfillment. So once again, you've got to know your numbers, what you're spending money on, how long it's going to take for your customers to pay you. So what's the, what's the cradle to grave number? Like yes. how many days from cradle to grave, from the time you put your hands on that product till the time the customer pays you? If you're in, like in your business, um, it's different, but at the same time in your business, you might get paid. What do you get paid twice a year or once a year uh, for every quarter, every quarter you get paid. So, um, so if you had 20 employees and you got paid every quarter, you better know what your numbers are. Cause you got to manage for, for the quarter. Three, That's the money months, the quarter. man. That's all we got. Right. That's exactly right. But it goes back to like, Oh, you, when you were just talking, remind me. So, Oh, so the way we fixed that guy, remember I told you, so they got a hundred thousand a month in billing and pays out. It turns out he's paying out the contractors before he gets the money and he keeps doing that several months. Now it's, the credit line is getting larger and larger and he couldn't figure out why we got a credit line. Well, it turns out he wasn't don't pay them until after you get paid kind of thing, yeah. which is what a lot of people do the delayed, but we actually switched the model. So think about this and think outside the box. And I just copied, what does a lawyer do? A lawyer asks for a deposit, a retainer. So that's what we started doing in this business was let's, you know, the first $500 billing, I need you to put in 500 bucks and I'll draw it down. Yep. So the cash is already there and you're billing against that. So he was never out of cash. Like you pre-build them 500 bucks. And then as it got down to a hundred bucks, you rebill them again, 500 bucks, 200 bucks, or then you could be on an as is basis. But what we changed, and, and I didn't, again, I didn't reinvent the wheel. That's what lawyers do. This was a different business, but I was like, well, that's what lawyers do is they charge a retainer. Corporate yeah. lawyers charge the company retainers. And as they draw down, they ask for you to put more money back in. What is the Georgia, I'm in Georgia, the toll booth, you put in 20 bucks. And as it gets down to like, Five dollars. They bill your credit card again to put in twenty bucks. I was like, "Who's going to spend twenty dollars?" In the LED lighting business and the electrical business, we always got seventy percent in advance. Now, okay. what we also got is we sold financing. A lot of our systems were three hundred thousand plus, so we we had a financing company. As soon as the customer signed on the dotted line, they had one more document, which was the lease commencement document. So they would actually sign the lease commencement before we delivered the system, which means we're getting 70% in advance from the bank. Good. Now, right. what, what we worked out with the bank is that they would delay the payment for 60 days. So their first payment would be due approximately 30 days after we would finish. But that way, no matter what, I was always getting a down payment in advance. I, we were, my, my philosophy in business at that time was no terms. Right. We don't, if you want, if you want us to extend you terms, I want 5% more. And, and that was the, you know, that was the thing. You've got to pay me higher. So if you want terms, go to a bank and we'll bring you the bank and they'll get you approved. And, and also, but the point is, it doesn't matter what business you're in. When you know your numbers, you know the things that you have to do to structure your deal so that you have the cash flow you need. Because my sales reps were commission only sales reps. Well, when they landed the contract, they didn't want to wait 30 days to get some of their commission. So we'd get 70% down. We'd give them, typically we'd give them half their commission, not all the 70%. So, yeah, you guys I, were already figured out the model. Yes, yeah, you don't we, get paid before you pay them. Yeah, so the salespeople, that would keep them taking care of the customer because they still had 50% more coming and uh, to get you know keep the customer happy until we get the system installed. But no matter what type of business you're in, 
if you don't know why you're struggling, it's probably here. It's in your cash flow. Probably from the cash flow, right? Exactly right. And and that it, you know, so I'm gonna sum up what we said and then I'm gonna pitch on top of that, right? So every business owner, eight reasons every business owner needs you need a cash flow statement. You need a cash flow statement, you need a cash flow statement. It's probably already in there in your QuickBooks or in your software. If not, you can easily create it. What is a cash flow statement? It's how much money am I making from selling my products, the profit, but then what am I using the money for? I'm buying inventory, I'm buying equipment, I'm buying uh, uh, software, I'm buying real estate, other property, and then financing activities. Did I borrow money? Did I have to pay money back? That, that eats up your cash, right? Those are your three things for cash flow. What are the reasons I got them over here and I just was looking at it. Uh, insights into your spending activities, right? So you kind of want to know where the money, where the cash flow go, right? Short-term planning, you need to know what happens next month, how much cash I'm going to need. Better picture of, of cash planning, same thing. It's the same thing again, cash planning for a longer period of time. Uh, ability to increase cash flow. I want more cash. I want a cash flow rich business. I do not want a capital intense business, a cash flow intense business. I want a cash flow machine, right? I don't want a machine that I got to keep putting cash in it. I no. want a vending machine that pays me cash, right? That's why digital products is such a, a, a All cash, big important no inventory. Yeah. yeah. Uh, improve knowledge of your cash balance. So you can, you know where it is, you know where it's going. Working capital. So how much cash do I need? We gave those examples of the, of the house business. We gave those, it, it, the service business where they were paying their contractors before they got paid. How much working capital do I need? Because a lot of times the more successful you are, the more cash your business needs just to keep operating, right? Yeah. Long-term planning. And the last was crisis management. Crisis management, just like we hit, we ended the pandemic. How much cash do I have on hand and how long, what's my burn rate? How much am I spending each month? How long can I stay in business, right? And so those are kind of your, you need a cash flow statement. 96% of business owners don't have it. They just look at the checking account, say, is it going up or down? Eh, that's okay, but that ain't great. That ain't, that, that's not detailed enough. You need to know where all the money goes, whether it be for uh, growth purposes, for, for solvency. Um, this is the type of stuff we talk about in our coaching program. Uh, why everybody else uses a cash flow statement, how they use a cash flow statement, how they get around working capital, how much cash they like to have on hand, three months, six months of operating, uh, a line of credit so that can allow them to increase or decrease. This is also what we do in our little profit acceleration session, right? We can help you find $50,000, $75,000, $100,000 in your business without spending a dollar more in advertising or marketing. What does that mean? We're helping you find cash flow. We're helping you generate money. Uh, I'm not going to generate cash flow for a business that, that isn't generating cash flow. Otherwise, I'd tell you you're in the wrong business. You sell yeah. more and you lose more. That doesn't sound like the right business. So, so our profit acceleration is how can we find that money for you and get it in your pocket, which means increasing your cash flow, which is what we all want. So both those, we do that profit acceleration session. We do our group coaching, Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com, Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com, our website, ProfitabilityMD.com, our YouTube channel, ProfitabilityMD, and of course, this podcast, everywhere you get your podcast, ProfitabilityMD. But cash flow is important. Cash is king. There's a reason that they say that. Cash is king. There's a reason they say that. Businesses go out of business for lack of cash flow, not for lack of profit. Hey, let's face it. I mean, to, to end on, a, on a, almost a little bit of a sour note, but every car uh, rental company in the United States went bankrupt during COVID because they never planned for that crisis. And so enough cash flow. they didn't have the cash flow to make it through when they all, they all of a sudden their business had no business. And so this is why you do it and you plan ahead. And this is why you have three other pillars so that when the when you need, when cash the flow, crisis, you need the cash flow to buy the other pillars right you need yeah. cash flow that you can buy real estate you need the cash flow so you can put it in your retirement plan you need cash flow so you can start a wealth accumulation plan that needs cash right the business has to generate cash to buy the other pillars it needs cash in order to pay for your business cash um, is king cash is king all right stuff. Matt. have a great afternoon take care Thank you.